Hello, let's do some Keynesian spending multiplier type problems. So Keynesians uh, really think a lot about the demand side uh, of the macro economy. So they think that if the economy is in a recession, the government comes out and spends, uh, this is going to cause a multiplier effect throughout the economy. So for example, let's say that the government uh, builds a, a new highway or a bridge or an airport. This is going to put a bunch of workers, hopefully who are unemployed, back to work and then when they have money in their pocket they're going to spend it at grocery stores which should create jobs or toy stores or uh, buy a new car, purchase more gas, um, eat out of restaurants, all, all of the good things that create jobs and then when those people have jobs then there'll be more spending there uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the theory behind this. So the math uh, behind this or the math in front of this I suppose uh, is this okay? So there's this concept marginal propensity to consume. This is the, uh, the basically the change in consumption. So how much they consume over the change in income. Okay. So in other words, if you got a thousand dollar raise, how much of that thousand dollar raise per year are you going to spend? Right. And if you spend, you know, nine hundred of it. Uh, we do that math, and it turns out to be 0.9, which is that one, right? Uh, if you spent, um, you know, if you're a more frugal type person, you only spent 600 of it, then we get 0.6, right? So then there's this other, the other idea is what if you're not spending it, if you're not spending that, then the opposite side must be the marginal propensity to save, which in this case is going to be 0.4 because um, you got this thousand dollar raise, you must be doing something with it. So, so four hundred dollars of that uh, would have got saved, and so your marginal propensity to save is 0.4. Another way to think about this is the marginal propensity to, to save plus the marginal propensity to consume. Oops, to consume has to equal one because one represents that whole amount that you got in your raise. Okay. So anyway, uh, we what we want to know is what what is the fiscal spending multiplier okay because I'm going to multiply that by five billion dollars uh, and that's going to be the amount of uh, growth in the aggregate demand in the overall economy so um, fiscal spending multiplier is one over one minus the MPC okay so that's how to do the multiplier effect there uh, so in this case um, it's 0.9 so it's one over one minus 0.9 uh, and you get 1 over 0.1, which is 1, let me start writing down here, it's 1 over 1 tenth, and mul so multiply that by 10, that does go away, multiply that by 10, and we get 10, okay? Now, if you look at that, um, 1 minus the MPC is this rearranged, so the other way to think about the fiscal spending multiplier, in case you're taking a test or you can't use a uh, notes or anything is 1 over the MPS and you'll get there exactly the same way okay so let's go back to the question here so I've got a uh, fiscal spending multiplier of 10 and I want to know how much after 5 billion dollars so we just multiply 5 billion times 10 and we should expect to see 50 billion dollars in increased growth in the aggregate demand on the spending side Okay, because more people have jobs, they're going to go spend, so on and so forth. So we put money in one person's pocket, then they spend 90% of it, and then the next person is going to spend 90% of it, so on and so forth. Uh, it works its way through. So that, that's how to do that. Now, you may also see a problem like this. This is much more realistic. Um, this is how the state of Arizona, or well, really anybody, uh, were to think about economic growth. They think, they think about it this way. They think, all right, look, we want to create $100 million in, in economic growth, either because there's a recession or you just feel like uh, somebody's disadvantaged somehow. We need to increase growth by $100 million. So uh, that's, that's what we want to get. So our target is $100 million. Okay. Um, it's going to be the, where did I get that? I want to know what the fiscal spending multiplier times the amount of spending. That was embarrassing. Uh, so uh, from here, I've got the marginal propensity consumed, so I can figure out the fiscal spending multiplier, and then just algebraically figure out what this is. Okay, so let's do that. So marginal propensity consumed. So remember, it's one over the MPS, so it's one over 0.2, uh, and that's one over two over ten, 
Uh, that turns into one fifth. One over one fifth is going to turn into five. Okay, so it's hundred million. Plug this back into what I was doing up there. Hundred million fiscal spending multiplier of five uh, times. Well, I'm going to call this G for government spending. So I'm going to divide by five. Divide by five, and I am going to need to get. Uh, whoops, what am I doing? Those cancel. Uh, and I'm going to need to 100 over 5 goes into 100. Uh, 20 million, 20 million dollars of government spending will get 100 million dollars. Okay, so that's that one. Now this other one uh, deals with the tax multiplier. So this is how much in tax cuts do I need to enact to get that 100 million dollars worth of growth? Okay, and often they do some combination of both of these, but uh, whatever. So 100 million. Uh, equal and then this is five. Oh, this is not five. What we need to do is the tax multiplier uh, times the tax cut. Okay. So this one's a little different, okay, because the tax multiplier is negative MPC over MPS. So it's negative MPC over negative MPS. And so the, the reasoning here is that if the government increases taxes, it's actually going to decrease spending. And vice versa, if the government decreases taxes, it's going to increase spending. Okay. So if it's negative, then they'll both be negative, and that'll be an increased level of growth. If it's a positive tax increase, then it's going to be uh, negative growth or a decrease in spending. Okay. So. Uh, negative MPC is negative 0.8 over the MPS, which is 0.2. And you can just do that here. And we've got negative uh, 4. Okay. Now, if you look at the two multipliers, um, you can see that the tax multiplier is negative, uh, and it's 1 minus whatever the MPS is. So the trick here to remembering what this tax multiplier is, is it's always negative. And it's one minus the fiscal spending multiplier. Okay, um, so you know if the fiscal spending multiplier is six, it'll always be negative five. The theory behind this is, um, if you give somebody a tax cut, they're not going to immediately run out and spend all of it. Uh, often they'll pay down debt that they already had, uh, or they'll stick it in the bank or invest it in the future. So that's not spending. Okay, so it's going to take more in tax cuts to get um, to that because here nobody gets to hold on to this money they just spend it right so we're gonna get spending back in the economy but here people have a choice and people will often uh, save some of it and we see that here in the MPS okay so to answer the question um, we've got uh, we want to get a hundred million dollars and we've got this tax multiplier of negative four we want to know how much in T T for taxes uh, do we need to cut? And that's going to be negative. So those those two both turn into positive. So we've got 4t, uh, 100 million, and divide by 4, divide by 4. So we have to get $25 million in tax cuts to equal uh, $100 million in growth. So you could do also do a combination of both. Uh, but that's and that's what that's what governor or you know governments do. They're trying to target economic growth, and so they they work with the fiscal spending multiplier backwards. That's where they get these numbers from.